and good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So the start of any year, really, it's always a natural time for any of us just to pause, reflect, and I suppose on our careers, perhaps where we want to go, where we've been. Of course, like given everything that's happened over the last two years, it's given each of us, I suppose, more even more cause to think about, about our work, what we want to do and where we want to go. So with that, the Cork Society is delighted today to be joined by Sean McLaughney. Sean's the founder of Learning Curve, and he's a sought after performance and talent support specialist, a speaker and the author of four books. So since 2001, he's helped over 20,000 professional, professionals internationally at every level to improve their performance. And he also provides talent support to organizations. In addition to that work and his work with Learning Curve, Sean's also a senior lecturer for IPAS, as well as a senior lecturer in accountancy school. So throughout the session, Sean's going to be taking questions. So if you do have any, please feel free to use the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. And Sean's going to try and address them as he goes through and any others we can address at the end. If you have any technical issues, there's also a chat function there and Fiona is online with us and she'll do her best to, to help you through any technical issues may, you may have. And, and also note, as you'll see, this session is being recorded. So with that, I'm just going to, just going to pass over to Sean and Sean, you can take it away. Thanks very much, Kevin, and thanks for the introduction. Um, hi, everybody, and um, thanks for taking the time to join me here for, for this lunchtime um, session. <clears throat> this new webinar um, we're, we're put together for this particular year. So um, we're all probably so used to Zoom, and it's, it's become part of our lives over the last two years. So again, as, as Kevin's saying there, if you have any questions, just pop them into the Q&A, and I'll look at them as we kind of go along. Um, <clears throat> the, the, I suppose the genesis behind this or the, the, the rationale behind it is that it is a, a time of year where we take a step back and kind of have a look at where do we want to go with our careers? What does it actually, you know, how do we do that? How do we move our careers forward? And, you know, everybody's at different stages of their careers. Some are starting out, some people are midway through their careers. And, um, but the principles that I'm going to talk to you about today applies to whatever part of the journey you're actually on when it comes to your career. But what's really paramount to it is, is taking that sort of responsibility uh, for moving your career forward. And I think that's the, the key element uh, that I like to get across. It's your career. What you want to do with it, it's up to you. But one of the key ingredients is to kind of set aside some time to make it actually happen. And that's really um, the, the sort of the thinking behind it. As, as Kevin said, um, I've spent over the last uh, be 21 years now with Learning Curve. I set up Learning Curve 20, uh, in February. But the, the, the sort of what I've learned over those number of years is that while people have great intentions to progress their careers, pretty often they leave with a chance. They kind of see how things happen. And uh, it was uh, interesting uh, at a, a business meeting um, to, this morning, breakfast meeting this morning. And what, what he was kind of uh, one of the points he actually made this uh, this client of mine who's a CEO of a co company a successful company is that we've always been on um sort of floating along for the last two years to kind of keep businesses kind of going and we've almost forgotten about growing the business and and, and pushing forward and, and this is what our conversations around and I was just thinking today's the same with our careers a lot of people have sort of kind of put their career progression on a little bit on stand uh, you know just hold on a holding pattern for, for want of better description whereas now it's about how do we move that forward what what can we do to move it forward so that's what i want to share with you and kind of mixing a, a couple of the books uh, that are written the the sort of the one on on uh, managing your career and also the time management book and just putting a couple of ideas from both of those books together for this particular webinar and um, the the, the when I speak to people, particularly uh, around career progression, sometimes we hit this wall as such, and it can be quite a challenge. Um, while people are very good at planning and kind of put plans together or have good intentions when it comes to, to moving the career forward, they still, again, comes up against that, that sort of wall or, or that challenges that to kind of prevent them from moving forward. And we need to kind of put today into context. For me, a challenge that's often overlooked is the time element. Uh, setting aside a specific time to progress your career, setting aside a specific time to say, this is what I need um, to spend my time doing to progress and move the career the way I want to go. And, and th the frustration can often be with people is not seeing the progression as quickly as they thought. And I've seen this um, happen with people starting off their careers. 
um, full of an energy, full of enthusiasm, you know, recently qualified and get a bit of experience and then say, you know, I, I, you know, I haven't progressed as quickly as I thought it was going to be. And then you kind of have a chat with them and say, well, where did you think you were going to be after the year or two years or three years? Um, and then start working out the timelines. And when we start working out timelines, it put a little bit more structure to what they actually had to do. So with that in mind, uh, I tend to work off a six, well, whether you call them six principles or six steps or six uh, areas you got to think about, but uh, break it down into these components. And that's when people end up with a really concrete plan at the end of it that's workable. And that's what I want you to get out of today's session. And the, the first thing we'll talk about is around career goals. What are they and, uh, you know, how to kind of make sure that they're workable. I've broken that into two parts. Now, step two is why does it matter, which is kind of part of goal setting, but also in itself. Why does your career matter? Why does this particular goal matter? So we have a look at that. Then we break the goals down into, well, OK, make it more manageable. What exactly do I have to do to achieve this goal? when it comes to your career, okay? So that's what's really cr critical going forward. Based on that, we then move from having this plan into making it happen. And that's when we come into the time management part of it. How much time will it take for me to progress my career from A to B? The time management balance sheet will become the game changer for most people. And this removes the sort of the frustrations that often happens when people look at the sort of progression and it's not moving as quickly as I would like to go. And then the last bit is committing to your diary. Um, it's all well and good to have thoughts in your head, ambition, um, sort of, this is what I want to happen. But until you commit it to your diary, when you said, this is what I'm gonna do today to move my career forward, it won't become a reality. It will just sit there and, yeah, I would love to do this or I, I was planning to do this. So that's what we're gonna have a look at. That's what we're gonna cover over the next, next hour. Standing side by side with, with putting all this together. This is an action orientated session. Um, so you need to very clearly come up with an action plan by the end of it. And the way I kind of devise an action plan, uh, I break it down into sort of three columns for want of a better description. And you can just write this on a piece of paper, three columns. Your first column you write down, where you are at the moment, we'll come to that. The third column is where you want to get to, and this is where we start off with. And the middle bit is how to get from where you are now to where you want to get to, and there are your actions. And it's very simple, on one page, you can then come up with three or four or five critical actions that get you from where you are today, this moment in time, to where you want to get to with your career, okay? And we're bridging that gap between the two. And that's a simple, on a blank piece of paper, just write three columns, where I am at the moment with your career. And you can think about that after the session, exactly where you are, where you're going to get to, we're going to start with, and then the actions you got to take. And that's the, the sort of, you know, hopefully by the end of the hour, you'll have some of these posts put on it or actions or thoughts uh, as we work our way through the session. You also have a copy of the workbook. I like to call it a journal because it's not, you know, do the session, magic wand, and it's finished. It's what you do after today's session that's really, really important. And that's why I, you know, want you to look at your journal as you go through these. You know, the next next hour is your initial thoughts, but then we kind of get into the sort of the actions that you're going to do over the next couple of weeks and keep filling the the journal up and keep writing down ideas into your journal. So just to kind of get a little bit of interaction going, uh, I just want you. You can use the chat pod. Um, just think about what are the key challenges. Uh, facing you from progressing your career uh, at, at the current climate, at the current moment in time? What are the, some of the challenges facing you when it comes to progressing your career? And just pop some, a couple of the, uh, ideas onto the chat pod there. What, what do you see as challenges facing your career? Let me just see if anybody wants to mute and talk, that's fine also, but I think most of you like to use the chat pod. Flat structure and department, okay. Very good. Thanks, Susan, for getting things started. Not enough time. And that's really what we're going to be having. Uh, and either that's really critical. So we're going to have a chat about that. And uh, making time. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. So you can see that time is, is a huge challenge. Flat structures. And again, where can I go you know, uh, on it? And that's sometimes why we have to think a little bit broader. 
we might be able to progress within our company. So we might have to think about, is there other ways of progressing our careers? Where, where will that happen? And uh, is there other things we can do uh, to, to get the experience? But what we can see is all of us will have very different challenges when it comes to progressing your career. So you got to live in the real world and deal with those sort of challenges. We're going to look at from the time point of view, uh, how can we do something there? Um, bear in mind also, one of the key um, reasons why I wrote this particular book, um, which is one of the first books that, that I wrote um, that the chart, chart accountants uh, kindly published for me, so they're my publishers as well, which is great, um, was about people taking personal responsibility for their careers. Um, this was based on a lot of research I would have done, uh, you know, with, with people when it comes to the careers and what, what they're actually doing. And the amount of people that, you know, look for excuses for not progressing their careers. In other words, blaming, blaming the company, blaming their managers, blaming, you know, uh, you know, not getting enough exposure to various different types of work. But very few people took responsibility to say, well, what, what can I do? Um, and what can I do to move it forward? And that's what we got to start with. We got to take ownership our careers it's ours it's nobody else's responsibility to move your career forward you're the one that's got to do that and whether you're starting off your career or whether you're halfway through your career or whether you come into the the last uh, the last career moves you got to take it uh, take responsibility for it and the reason why i say that is that um i'm just doing some work with with um, a friend of mine uh, and he's a very senior position in a, in a company at the moment but he's looking for his last what he would term his last career move uh, and what he means by that is he's moving into the executive um, and and end of of the, the company now and moving moving into that area. But he's also keeping an eye on directorships and and things that when he comes into retirement end of things. And it's fascinating to see what he actually has to do to move his career forward, which is the exact same principles that we're talking about when I'm talking to people on grad programs. What they have to do. It's just at different levels, and that's what we got to be thinking about. And the first thing is. And, and what we spoke down, we, 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 our first conversation around was, well, what is your career goal? What is it over the next three to five years that you want to achieve? Even though, as I said, he's coming into, he's in his mid fifties, looking at that between fifties and 60, 62 years, that type of portion of, of his career, is, and then he wants to, to, to retire. So it's about setting those sort of career goals. High performing companies, and they set out a business plan. From there, they have goals that have to be achieved. You've been given goals in your performance reviews. You know, goals are part and parcel of our lives if you want to achieve um, um, high performance. So why don't we use them for our careers? The same principles apply. We got to underpin where we want to go with our careers with having good solid goals behind it. And within that, at the heart of, of, of um, your plan is you can see the goals, but you have to have a vision. You've got to start somewhere, which is where do I want to go? And that's what we're going to start with at, in, in a moment. And then you have, you know, what do I need to happen? What skills do I need? What experience do I need? And so you then turn them into goals to achieve that. But at the heart of it is your career. It's yours. And so you've got to shine that light on your career. You've got to just take the step back and reflect on what do I want from a career? And I always notice that at this time of year, the amount of people that move jobs, that have done a little bit of soul searching over the Christmas period or, or whatever, or might be happy with, you know, their bonus that they got or, or, or what, whatever, this time of the year is a new part. But we should be doing this all the time. And it's not about moving companies. It's about looking at where am I with my career and where I want to go to. So we need to be a little bit creative. So what I want you to do now, and when I'm in workshops, uh, I always start with pictures. We always draw pictures to, to get us thinking. And it's really important that you draw a picture now. I want you, uh, it will take about a minute, but I want you to draw a picture of what you want, what success looks like in, we say, three years time, five years time. Um, now, it's really important you draw a picture on this, and trust me on this one, okay? A lot of people say, why do I draw pictures? The reason for this is that it visualizes what you want to do. Words can be kind of restrictive. OK, so I just want to draw a few pictures. So just spend about a minute to get your first thoughts down. You can use page nine of your journal. Um, there's a uh, room there in your journal, page nine. Just what does your career look like in three to five years time? So what do you want your career to be? 
for example, something simple could be you looking for a promotion and whether you want to be promoted to a system manager, to a manager, to a director, to a head of a department. So what does that look like? Don't worry, I won't get anybody to show their pictures. This normally when we do, do um, the workshops, everybody shows their pictures. Um, but there's so many people have logged in today, we won't have time to look at everybody's pictures. But it is part and parcel. It's really important to do this. And it's an exercise you should do this evening as well to go back to the picture and just finish out the picture. But it's the starting, it's the start point. Because <clears throat> when I was uh, doing the research for the book, the amount of people, and I'm just going to ask you this question now, and we just we just open a poll, and I'll just launch the very first one there. Do you have career goals that are written down? Just a straightforward yes or no. Thanks for flying on the buzzers. Do we have a career goals written down? Yes or no. We got, uh, thanks everybody for voting on this. Uh, and just, it's just to kind of, you know, like just see where everybody is. And it's no surprise that 71% uh, don't have written down goals and 29%, my maths are great, uh, have, um, have written down goals. Um, when you're really serious about moving your career forward, I'm just going to take this off the screen, um, is that if you don't have written down clear goals, a clear plan, you are rolling the dice. You are taking a chance with it. It's a land of hope. Uh, and there's a fantastic title to a book called Hope is Not a Strategy. And I really love the title and, and I wish I had thought of the title as brilliant because it isn't. Hoping that your career will progress, hoping that you get that promotion, hoping that you get exciting work to do. Why not take control of it? Why not make it happen? And the first thing is you've got to understand where you want to go with your career. And that's why the picture is so important. This is where I want to get to. And the second thing then we got to do is we got to then start set, writing down goals. And the mechanism that I use for writing down goals is the smarter way, all right? And uh, most people are familiar with SMART. It's used in businesses all the time for performance goals, SMART, specific, measurable, aligned, uh, realistic, and time frame. It's the ER bit that is slightly different and is the driver. And I'm going to talk about that in step two. But the first thing is just to think about the SMART. The S and the M are critical. What is it that you want from your career? And then quantify it so you know you've achieved it. An obvious and easy example is promotion to a manager. That's fairly easy. You'll know whether you get it or you don't. That's what you want. But then you've got to make sure that it's aligned with your career ambitions, your career plan. There's no point saying you want to be promoted to a role of a manager if you haven't got a plan made out. This, this is how I'm going to get there. And this is what I need to do to get there. All right. And that's what your plan is. So you've got to align each goal for your career to your overall career plan, that vision that you actually have, that, that picture you're after drawing. But you also got to be realistic. And what I mean by that is, do you have the necessary skills, knowledge, and expertise to achieve that goal straight away? Or do you need something about it? And that's why you go back to the sort of um, the action plan. Where are you at the moment? Where do you want to get to? And then we're going to see in a moment, do we need to do something to help get there? If you already have the skills, the knowledge, the expertise for to progress your career, then that's great. But most people will see a gap between where they are and where they need to get to. And that's the realistic thing. Have you got that experience, that knowledge? And then the time frames, as Anita and Rachel pointed out, do we have enough time for our career? Most people don't. Most people don't set aside enough career or enough time to progress their careers. And then they get frustrated. But it's like anything. It's like any sport. You take any sport, be good at it. You got to set aside time for training. Um, so this evening I'll be going and um, training, bring the kids to, uh, training. They want to get better. I have them written, writing down, okay? Every two weeks they have to write down what do they want to work on in training to become a better player. And they do it automatically now. Whereas before, why do they, and they call it their homework, all right? But the thing about writing it down it becomes very, very crystal clear. This is what I want to achieve. And then we say, okay, if you want to do that, we now have to do that in training because that won't happen by chance. You won't be get, your first touch won't become better just because you want it to become better. You got to work on it to become better. Your careers is no different. Time frames. How are we getting closer to where we want to get to? Where do we need to be? 
over the next six months, another six months, another six months for our three year plan to happen. Okay, and that's what we got to do. I'm going to talk about the ER bit, the engaging in the reward in a, in, a, in a moment. But there's the template on page 11 that you got to be using in order to write down your goals. Be specific, put the measure in there, show how it's aligned to your career plan and where you're going with your career. Make sure that it's realistic. In other words, if there's gaps, okay, here's the gaps, and this is how I'm going to fill those gaps. The time frames, where I want to be at the end of the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, the fourth quarter, the way you would with a business. You have your financial budgets done out for the year. You know where the company has to be at the end of the first quarter, the second quarter, the third, and so on. The same applies to your careers. Now, the ER bit, why does it matter? Um, when I talk to people about their careers, okay, and they talk to me and they talk about their promotion that they're looking for, that this is where they want to go. The first question I always ask, why? Why do you want to go there? Why do you want that promotion? Why do you want to do that piece of work? Why do you want to move to that company? Which is always an interesting one. So they're talking about moving from one company to another. Why? Why specifically that company? And usually they come up with the, the sort of the standard answer of, um, you know, I need a fresh challenge. Oh, okay or better pay the pay one always comes up and then i kind of get into it well really seriously you're moving because you're getting an extra couple of grand are you going to reach a ceiling pretty quickly then if you keep moving just for for money rather than your your knowledge expanding your knowledge learning more so therefore you can get more money because you have more skills you more knowledge you more experience you you have you have more to offer all right. And, and, and it's fascinating when we start looking at why people leave. There's always exit interviews. And when I was doing um, the research for uh, actually another book on, on performance management, uh, I did a lot on why people leave companies because it was tying into staff retention part. part. And um, when we got into it, it was really interesting to see why people move. Uh, a lot of the times it was um, they felt their career wasn't progressing. But in reality, the company had a lot of plans for that person, but they never communicated it. They never had that really good, solid conversation. And one of the things I would highly recommend is that with your line manager or uh, senior management is to have a really good conversation around your career and where it's kind of got, got, got to go. Um, to give you an example of why you know people leaving without a plan can be a disaster, um, a, a friend of my wife's, there a couple of, of um, about two months ago now, left her job and went to another job and within a week left that simply because, uh, and I've, I find this astonishing, um, she, she only realized in week one of the job that it was actually um, shift work. And she assumed that, that it was nine to five because she always worked in nine to five and every job she worked in was nine to five. But she moved from one industry to another type of industry okay which was really interesting because w when i was further talking about it um she actually wants to go back into the industry she was in but in a different sort of role and i said but why did she jump from there to there to come back to here like that just doesn't make sense and it, essentially she has no plan she has no sort of she knew she wanted to get out of where she was she didn't really know where she wanted to go to and she ended up going around in circles to try to get to where she ultimately wants to get to, which is going to end up wasting about a year of her time before she actually gets to where she wants to go to. So it's, it's about having that sort of, you know, understanding and what is the motivation behind why does it matter rather than think of the negative stuff, you've got to think of the important stuff. Why is your career important to you? What is it about your career that will drive it forward? And that's the first thing you got to be thinking about before you start making big decisions. You got to think about here's my career, and this is why it's important to me, and this is why progression of my career is important to me. And that's why I always ask the first question: Why? Why do you want to move? Why do you want this promotion? And it's based on sort of understanding importance. So on page nine of your journal, and when you think about this this evening. Why is your career important to you? You must answer that question. And it means different things to different people, but that will become your driver. That will become the sort of the reason why you will 
and be successful. And it's based on Victor Vroom. Some of you may have come across Victor, Victor Vroom. There's a whole host of different motivational theory. The reason why I like Victor Vroom's is it's, it's simple, it's applicable, and I use it in sport all the time. Okay, and uh, I, I love sports. And when I'm coaching, this is this is where, where I, I try to focus my attention. Work is no different than this one. And, and I'll put it into work context. M is the motivation. All right. How much drive you will put in to progress in your career. Focus on the E by the I by the V. And basically, essentially what that means is. Do you value. The outcome, the vision where your career wants to go to. So for example, if there's a promotion there, do you really value that promotion or would you just like it because of the title or do you want it because of the role, the responsibility, the challenges that you face in that particular role? If that is high, well, then you will put in the effort. But if it's not, the motivation will drop down and we will come up with a whole host of excuses not to progress our career. Okay, haven't got time, not getting the right support, whatever, just to make ourselves feel a little bit better. Okay, the E and the I is if I put in the effort, will I achieve those goals? Um, do I expect to achieve? And if I do this particular goal, will it help me to achieve my overall? And this is why the E or bit of your goal is so important. So you need to write down why exactly this particular goal that you're going to do to help you progress closer to your vision. Why is it important? And that's the EO. Make it engaging. Here's the reason. Here's why it's important. And this is what I'm going to gain from it. And if the EO is not sufficiently big enough, the smart pit won't happen. The goal won't, won't happen for you. And that's just reality of it. And we put things up. And that's why the start of the year, a lot of people have great intentions, great sort of ambitions, but then it starts to wane as the months go by. So that's why that has to be at the front of your journal all the time. Here's my goal. Here's why it's important to me. Then we kind of, when we've done that is now let's get into the practicalities of making that happen. Once we got our mindset right, our motivation drive right, how do we make this happen? And again, with the big goal, for example, we just keep something, keep it simple. I want to um, become an assistant manager or a manager or senior manager by the end of the year or within two years, whatever the time frame you have on it. That can be very overwhelming of huge or some people will park it. Oh, yep, that's what's going to happen, but I have two years to make it happen. No, we got to start working on it now. So you got to list all of the activities you need to do to make that happen. All right. You've got to break it down in, into its smaller components. So, for example, on, on this particular goal, OK, just to kind of keep it as, as like a case study. And um, we've got to break it down into a couple of steps. So you kind of look at it and you say, right, um, one of the, the best career um, mo mo moments that I actually have for progress in my career happened many, many, many years ago. This is back when, when um, before I set up Learning Curve at the start of my career. Um, it was the best and most humiliating lesson I ever got in my career. It was best because it woke me up, um, but it was also hugely humiliating in it. There was a promotion and I went for the interview and it was, uh, the, this was uh, 30, 30 odd years ago. Um, the, the, there was a HR director was there and the general manager was there and the general manager was a very serious uh, old school type of, of uh, general manager. Um, and he, asked, he had a list of questions that he asked me. And if, essentially what it boiled down to was, I couldn't answer any of the questions. I didn't know, I hadn't, hadn't done my prep work. I just assumed I would get the role because I was good at my job. All right, arrogant, you know, just thought, yay, why wouldn't you give it to me? I'm a couple of years here now, doing a great job, Hey, give it to me. Um, and I then realized I had no idea of what the role really was about. I hadn't done any prep work whatsoever. And uh, I hadn't got myself uh, the necessary experience that I thought I had loads of experience, but I didn't have the experience that was required. And it meant that I was able to progress my career a lot quicker because of it. It was so embarrassing. It was huge embarrassing. I, I walked out of that and I said, that is never ever going to happen to me again. 
it was fabulous um what what took place uh, not at the time <laughs> it took a while to recover from it but it was really it so this role analysis so many people when i talk about where they want to move with a career and i said well have you broken down it into what you need what is the role and uh, have you spoken to the hr director have you spoken to um people that are in it so i'm going to show you how to do it in a moment and then you got the skills analysis as i said have you got the skills to do that where are they at the moment where's the gaps and then have that skill mastery plan so this is how you do it. this is an exercise i do all the time now with, with people in workshops or one-to-ones and i know you all like a balance sheet so i i, I use a balance sheet on it which is essentially uh, what people have to offer okay and what does the company need and when they balance everybody's happy I offer what you need. So I'm working for this company and I offer a range of skills, knowledge and expertise. And it's what exactly what the company needs. It, that's that's perfect. Reality is it tends not to balance. Either I don't offer what I, sh I sh should be offering or I don't know what the company needs. So I offer things, but the company don't need them. So what you now have to move in, into this exercise is you got to list what do you actually offer? But critically, you got to find out what is it the company actually need for the role you're going after. So if it's a managerial role, what do they actually need in that specific role? So that's what you got to be think, thinking about. So, for example, if you take the I offer bit, and this is from an actual case that we did. Um, it was a couple of years ago, obviously, because we haven't been in, in face to face um, since. But I just took this off the flip chart and put it there and you can see most times when people talk about what they offer they talk in general terms oh i am professional i offer skills my knowledge and my qualification and uh, all of those good things all right and as i said i've done this hundreds of times and that's pretty much the general sort of list a bit of difference here and there but generally speaking that's what people people have um, put down when i ask them what does the company need again they talk in very much general terms they need skills they need knowledge they need commitment they need uh, qualified staff you say okay that's great but what do they specific need for the job you're going after and, say, and they say what do you mean you know that's general but specifically what are they so you need to find out for the role you're going after and i've done this myself in my career where i have spoken to the hr director from their perspective what is it they're looking for they tend to say what they look for in the person as much as the role i talked to the head of that department that I was kind of going after so i spoke to the head what did they look for i spoke to other managers who were in similar roles what did they look for i then spoke to my mentor at the time what did he think that i should i should i should be doing okay and all of that gave me a better understanding of what the company needs were in this situation i'm just showing you for example this was this was a specific role that this person um, she was going for uh, in the managerial um, role, and they you know this is I'm only putting up a couple of things here just for, for the purpose of the exercise, but it really got into the heart of what they were looking for. It got down into the type of person they were looking for, and I'll and I'll show you this in a moment. Some of the things that she fell down on and why she didn't get the actual job because we were doing this after the event, um, and and then we had to redo it. So this is what you've got to be thinking about because you need to know where you're going to spend uh, critical time going forward so once you've done that exercise you then got to do a SWOT analysis okay so i'm just going to just the second question just going to pop it open here have have you carried out a personal SWOT analysis on yourself in the last six months have you actually done a SWOT analysis? SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Have you actually done one on yourself? You might have done one on, on a business, but on yourself. Been great that you're flying through the, the um, here. Yeah, we got, here we are. Everybody has voted again. Thanks very much. Um, here we are. There's one more come through. That's it, 75% of you, 78, we're, we're nearly at, oh, look, we're into the 80s now. I'll keep it open for another minute. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's uh, great voting there. Okay. Um, not surprisingly, again, and this is why I, I posed the question, and it's something that you should really do after today's session. 85% uh, 
is no, haven't done a personal uh, SWOT analysis, personal SWOT analysis, and 15% yes, okay? Uh, and that's 84% of your voting. So that's a great, great turnout. Uh, just end that there, take that away there. Um, this is hugely important that you do a SWOT analysis. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? For the specific role you're going after, you could do one for your current role, which can be useful as well, but where you want to progress your career to, what are your strengths in doing? And I was doing this only last week with a team. Um, they were as part of their quality review. A, a part of their business is each um, business area have to do a quality review once every five years, and they do different different departments each year. And we did a SWOT uh, SWOT analysis, uh, and they were doing one on themselves uh, on it. And it's a very much an eye opener for them, and uh, and it was a very productive conversation as well. And um, see weaknesses as you know, like being areas where you can improve. It's it's sometimes a nicer way of putting it. But you got to look on building on your strengths. Okay, you got to identify areas where there's gaps. Okay, that you need to work on. Then where are these opportunities to develop, to grow, to gain additional experience? And then where are the threats when it comes to progressing your career? With your eye on your vision, that picture that you drew at the start of the session, where you want to go with your career, always focus on that. So what are your strengths there? What are the weaknesses there? So what are your experience that will help you achieve that? But where are your gaps on it? Where are the things that are going to stop you from progressing your careers? So what are those weaknesses? And you got to sort of write them up. Here's an example of that. Okay, this is this is a particular person. This is her one, and she had missed out on promotion. That's why she asked me, "Would I do this exercise with her?" And and you see in her strengths there some terrific stuff. You know, in, in there, and she helped out with the trainees, and she worked in an accountancy firm, and helped out on that. You know, like I mean, and she, she was very sort of. Um, a type of person that liked to, to, she was very ambitious to move forward and she was helping as much as she could to, you know, put her out there, herself out there and, and, and seeing. Um, the weakness was the problem, okay? Uh, and you see here, the weakness, reluctant to manage upwards. Now, the reason why that was a problem, okay, was they felt um, that she was a little bit inexperienced, which meant that could she say no and uh, could she be decisive? Could she make really tough decisions? And um, the fact that she wasn't able to manage upwards. So then they were kind of concerned because I spoke to, when she got this feedback, I also spoke to the senior managers who were in on the interview to kind of get a better understanding. And when they, when they explained this to me, what they were kind of saying is was, they were then nervous that she wouldn't be assertive enough uh, with clients and saying no when it needed to be said, because she was always saying, yes, she was always willing to take on more, take on more work from them. And she never sort of said no to, to, to managers, which was an interesting thing to see that they were willing, they preferred if she did and, and, and that. So we had a look at those weaknesses and there you can see what the threats were. So if you kind of look at the, the, you know, there's a template there, I think on page 24 of your workbook to do it for you, I highly recommend you do a SWOT analysis on yourself. It'd be ideal if you got somebody who knew you very well to do one as well, just to kind of see what from their perspective. And uh, be fantastic if your manager did it, who's ultimately going to sort of decide your, your career. The more senior you, you go in an organization, the less likely you, you will ask somebody within the company to do it. If you're starting off your career, it'd be fantastic to do. Get a mentor to do one with you or somebody who knows you particularly well. And then you move into this analysis. So as I said, from, from this particular person, her managing upward, the gap there was not saying no. So that then felt that their perception was, how would she actually um, say, you know, make those tough decisions was, was their concern, okay? And business development, and there was no sort of um, proof that she was good at business developing. Uh, she didn't bring in an awful lot of business. Bear in mind, though, like she was only really starting out of her career. It wasn't expected of her at that uh, in her role. However, they were kind of saying is, you know, she should have been sort of even passing on contacts or, you know, spotting where there might have been a potential. Networking and presentation skills, the way she actually came across in presentations again. So there was loads that we could work on. 
it was just unfortunate that if she had done this six months previously, she could have put herself in a far better position. It was only after the event. And so that's why it's critical that you do this gap analysis. And don't waste time over the next three, six, 12 months thinking that you're where you should be. And then you go for the promotion or you go for the role and you don't get it. You then get the feedback, which is 12 months wasted. You know, you could have got this now and it, it, before, before you go for the position. That all feeds into your personal action plan. Um, this bit never ceases to amaze me uh, why so many people leave their uh, personal skill mastery plan up to themselves. Uh, I call it skill mastery. Most people call it personal development plan or training plan or whatever terminology you want to put on it. The reason why I call it skill mastery is it's not about training. It's about developing. It's about not just, you know, coming to sessions, you know, I would do sessions on presentation skills, for example, and we would have done, done it with this particular person. But then the mastery of that is what you do after the session. Where do you get the opportunity to practice those presentation skills, for example? Okay. And it's what you do afterwards. And that's why I now give journals to everybody. And, uh, you know, do the session. That's great. But also think about what you're doing afterwards. And you should have a 12 month plan put together. Your company, your manager will send you on training courses, but you want to master certain skills. You want to master the critical skills that will progress your career. And by mapping this out, and it's not all just training, it's about going to network events, it's going to seminars, it's reading, it's having a mentor, it's um, putting yourself on projects and getting, uh, going to meetings. You know, all of this is you're developing yourself. You're developing your skill set. And every month, you should be doing something that's progressing your career. That's really investing your time wisely. Um, I would do CBD events for various different uh, professional um, bodies. And it never ceased to amaze me the number of people that leave it to the last minute to do the number of hours they actually have to do. Or but just pick events to go on just to get their hour or their two hours or whatever. And I'm kind of saying, you know, there are so many events and uh, charter councils have so many events that are available throughout the year that people could avail of that will progress their career. If they just think, take a little bit of a step back and say, right, what, what skills could I develop going on that session? What could I do going to that event? What could I, and, and map it all out. <clears throat> that is using your time so much more productively because you will get things done. Okay, so think about mapping it out, <coughs> excuse me, for the year. Uh, that's that will help you progress your career going forward. And that's a critical thing because here's <coughs> really important is estimating time. How much time do you need to progress your career? And that's a question that I've often been asked. And my answer is always, I have no idea because it's your career. And you need to know what you have to do. But by doing the first three steps, you're now in a position to see that and to see how much time you actually need. So once you've broken them down into those sort of manageable chunks, you then um, start looking at your plan. And then you're kind of saying, right, OK, what are the uh, what are the things I got to do to go forward? So you got to start building the time required. You need to know. Because again, people ask me, should I spend an hour a month on my career or an hour a week in my career? And again, I don't know. I have no idea what you should be spending. But you need, you need to know. You need to estimate how much time um, all of these items. People love writing lists. They love writing out plans and they write all the things they have to do. But I said, well, how much time is all that's going to do? In my time management workshops, for example, is one of the critical things we do in the time management workshop is to, on your to-do list, you say, how much time does each of these tasks take? So what are you going to get done today? Well, we need to know how long this is going to take uh, in order to get that, for that to happen. So if you look, even just the bit that we've broken down, the role analysis, the skills analysis, the skill mastery plan, okay? How much time? So you can break it down. So. Um, the role analysis. Okay, I got to get the job description. I got to speak to HR. I got to speak to uh, a line manager. You know, what are the four or five, six things you got to do for the role analysis, but that's going to take a half an hour. That's going to take an hour. That's going to. Now you're getting a better understanding that, okay, I can get that done by the end of, uh, by the end of, of, of February. All right. So that's that bit done. 
the skills analysis, the SWOT analysis, how long is that going to take? Who's going to be involved in it? And you just break it down. That's going proximally. And that when you do that, it leads into one of the game changers that comes up on the time management courses or the course that I do. Uh, and this is the it's, 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 it's what I call principle number two in, in the time management course. And I'm just going to show you how you use it for your career progression. Um, <laughs> and here's why I love the balance sheets. Um, your day always balances with time required to do things with time available, the amount of time you got available. And whether we are proactive about it or reactive to it, it will always balance. In other words, you will stop working at a specific time in the day and that it closes off. When it comes to your career management, it's such an open-ended um, task because there's no end. It's continuous that you need to break it down as said to time required. So you think of the, the task you're going to do. So you just do the role analysis. Now you look in your diary to say, OK, where's the capacity in my diary with my day that at work and all the things you're doing? Where's the spare capacity in there to set aside a specific task? So if it's going to take an hour to do the role analysis, or sorry, to do the job description, where's the hour in your day that you're going to spend? Are you going to spend one hour doing it? If it's going to take an hour, you're going to do it in two half hour chunks. But where is that available within your day? You have a busy day as it is, but you need to see where is the time available for you to spend on your career development, because you now know how much time you need, because you have all the tasks listed and the time to cite it. Now you got to go to the other side and kind of say, right, where, where will I find it? For most people, and this is why going back to the very start with Anita and Rachel making the uh, really important point, not enough time, making time, where's the time? Generally speaking, because we are so busy, we don't set time aside for what we need to do to progress our careers. And that is why our careers do not progress for most people the way we would like to or in the time frames we want. And that's why people will get frustrated. Oh, I didn't, my career is not progressing as quickly as I wanted to go and things aren't moving as fast as I want to be. It's because we're not setting aside enough time to make that happen. We are not setting aside the time to, for skills development, for knowledge, for um, experience, for, for you know, skill mastery that is required so people will see you in that role and think of you in that sort of way and say, yeah, you have all of those skills. Rather than you have to go to an interview and try and convince them, that shouldn't be happening. They should want you to go for the role because they can see that you have all of those skills and you've mastered them. So what you now need to do with your time, because your time is so precious, <clears throat> we don't have an awful lot of it, is you've got to break down the actions which we've done. You've now done the time required for each of those actions. You now have to prioritize and say, OK, which of all of these actions have the biggest impact? How does this action impact my career where it's going? This is where the alignment kicks in. So you're setting up your sort of goals. <clears throat> you're breaking it down into manual chunks. And you're now looking at what impact would this particular activity have on moving my career forward? This is where I will now start spending my time. And what I will do is start spending my time on the high impact activities, the things that will make the biggest um, in helping move my career forward. That's what I would do when you have done that, uh, that template. And then <clears throat> once you've done that, you've now prioritized, you know what sort of time you got to spend, put it into your diary. In the same way you put other things that are really important into you, you put into your diary. You've got to put your career development into your diary. The actions that you're going to say and do, you've got to say, right, here's where I'm going to do it. This is the time allocated for this particular task. And if it's really important to you, go back to Victor Room. Go back to the EO part of, of your goal, why it matters. If your career really matters to you, and this goal really matters to you on your career goal really matters to you. You will then put that into your diary. You will have time for that progression, for that, that activity. If it doesn't, you will come up with excuses. I'm too busy. OK, and that's all it is, is an excuse rather than um, the actuality of it. It's principle number one of my time management book. It's the first and foremost that I talk about when it comes to time management. 
because uh, if we don't get this right, the rest of the stuff doesn't work. We got to plan and schedule uh, our day uh, from from a work point of view, but we equally we got to plan and schedule our career progression. And if we don't do that, we might do the planning bit, but if we don't schedule it, it will not happen. And what t tends to uh, uh, materialize is that people will then um, become really really busy. And and this is the start of the year. And I will talk uh, to people halfway through the year again, how are things progressing? And, and the reason why this, this will happen is next, next um, Friday, um, I, I deliver um, a, a session uh, on a grad program. Um, and, and this is a bunch of engineers and architects and um, quantity surveyors for, for this large, large, organ, large, large company. And I would deliver one, two, three, four different programs on the grad program in year one of the grad program over you know, a six month period, a bit like that. So I get to know them quite, quite well. I'll be coming back to them. We start off with the career one. We, we, we call it career boot camp, and it's a, it's a um, half day session. And we go through all the things in, in some of the things we were talking about here in lots of details. Um, and they have to come up with a plan and they have to send me the plan of what they have to, what they're going to do over the next period of time. And um, they also know that when in four weeks, I'll be talking to them again to see what progress have you made. And I've been doing this for about, this be the fourth year that um, I've been on th with this particular grad program. And the same things happen every single year. Those who send me on their career plan and it's written down and they have put down time frames and they have scheduled it into the diary have made progress. Those who had to be chased up and those who had just kind of put a few things together, just kind of like homework, done it, pass on Sean, things don't progress. Uh, they come up with a load of excuses, uh, fantastic excuses, but that's all they are, they're excuses. And uh, it is their career. It's it's their you know it's it's a you know it's their duty to move things forward, but yet they don't do it because why they haven't planned and scheduled. They haven't put it into the diary when they're doing. And as I keep saying to them, this is not my career. I'm, you're not doing this for me. You're doing it for you. I'm just facilitating it to see you know to get the principles right for you moving forward. And that's the key element there of understanding the importance of your career. And that's why we started off at the very start of the session, why is it important to you? And if that is there and is really clear that this is why my career is important to me, then the goals, the listing, the, the set aside time, all of that you will do. But if it isn't that important to you, the excuses will kick in. And, and, and that's just my experience of doing this for 20 odd years. It, it hasn't changed in all of that time. Technology has changed. Um, how people uh, do it, all of these principles have changed, but the principles themselves don't. And, and that's why I highly recommend writing down um, these things, these goals. Now, there's a few, bit of urban myths around <clears throat> when you write down your goal <clears throat> that somehow magically you're more likely to make it happen. It's, it's not. There's, there's other things that are kind of going on. But what's really critical is that we have an understanding of if there's clarity there, we have a vision, we visualize it, and now we have the steps that we need to take. So when we think about what we covered here today, before we kind of go into the Q&A, is that it's your career goal. It's your career, your responsibility, you own it, it's nobody else's, okay? So it's, only, it's up to you to progress it. And the best way of progressing is understanding, first and foremost, why it matters. OK, once you know why it matters and you've then have your vision, but you then write down your goal of what you need to do to achieve that vision. You then got to list all of the activities and break it down into manageable chunks. Once it's broken down into manageable chunks, then look at the time element, because that's the big challenge for most people is the time element. How much time do you need to spend on each of those activities and then prioritize them? <clears throat> Which are the ones that are going to have the biggest impact? Look at the balance sheet. <clears throat> how much time you need, where's the time available on your working week, when are you going to do it? And once you establish that, put it into your diary. Tuesday, two o'clock, I'm, I'm going to talk to HR or whatever, whatever the activity is. 
And in that way, you're committed to it. And then you see your progress being made. And once you see progress being made, your career moves a lot quicker because that's the, the sort of thing we need progress. It's a huge motivating factor is progression. We've made progress. So remember, you know, successful careers don't happen by chance. You know, they're, they're the result of good planning and taking that responsibility, but it also requires investment and time. So with a couple of minutes to go, has anybody any questions that they would like to have? Thanks, Khan. Brilliant, Kevin. Thanks very much for, the, for your comments. Has anybody any questions um, that anybody ha would like to ask? Um, two things will happen. I will stay on after, after the session's finished if anybody wants to ask. So you can either use chatbot or you un unmute your mic. Uh, so I'll stay on if you want to ask it uh, on a one-to-one -one afterwards or because uh, I know it's coming up and people have to rush to our next meeting uh, or if you can just use the Q&A or the chat pod to uh, ask any questions. If anybody has any questions, I'll be delighted to answer them. Other than that, it's just a huge thank you for me for your participation and for um, uh, coming along and, 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 and spending an hour with me. Hopefully you found something there useful that will be helpful on progressing your career. Um, Brilliant. Thanks, Anita. That's great. For... Fantastic. Kevin? That's great, John. Um, listen, thanks very much. I think that was, personally, I found that really informative and there's some really interesting food for thought there for everybody. So listen, I think a lot of people seem to be dropping off, yeah. which is understandable given the time. Um, time frame, yeah. On behalf of ourselves, just thanks for everybody for dialing in and to yourself, that was to be honest, one of the most engaging and one of the most um, thought-provoking sessions I've been on in quite a while. So I think in particular that comment around great careers don't happen by chance. I think if anybody takes anything away, I know personally that from today's session, that, that certainly is one and really is. <laughs> it's about being dis disciplined, I think, and committing to the diary and giving, yeah. giving ourselves the time that we need. We all have busy days, but it is about yeah. making that time, not finding that time. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Um, so listen, on behalf of everybody, thank you very much. Um, as you say, the Q&A is there. So if somebody does want to hang on, and yeah. uh, I'm sure you're available for a few minutes. But I am indeed. To yeah. yourself and yeah. to everybody for dialing in, thank you very much. Um, as I said, we have events coming up over the next while, which will be through our, our normal mailing lists and also on the um, Judy Institute's website. So listen, thanks very much. And to you, Sean, thanks so much for your time. Yes.